What is up, everybody? Sean Sheehan back here with another edition of the betting show for SureDog.com. And the first one of the year, fights are back this weekend. We have a, a pretty big UFC card, not the biggest card in the world, but a fun one uh, with a, a big headliner to... Uh, uh, to top it with possibly well actually not it was just announced actually this morning as I was reading this uh, that, that Chan Sung Jung is, is getting that title shot but it could be the next in line for the title shot uh, depending on what happens with Max Holloway and all that but we will get to that fight uh, in a second there's a KSW card as well this weekend and other cards uh, around the place I have a KSW preview up I have a little bit of talk about the featherweight pitcher as well in another video on Shardog. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, uh, please check them out. And I will have four vi uh, bets here from the US uh, UFC and one from KSW as well. And I will run through some of the other KSW lines as well. I see there's some on best fight odds. So uh, always a great place to go on. And a shout out to them as well for uh, always having great prices up to date and everything as well too. To help me out with this, uh, with this video. So um, I'm going to get straight into it here. And uh, get straight into my bets. Uh, before I do that, though, please bet responsibly. Don't bet more than you have. Bet less than you can even bet. It's the best way to go because uh, you quickly get caught up in this and it's it's not a good way to go. So please bet responsibly. Uh, you know, keep it fun. Keep it light. Me here, I this is an MMA betting show. This is not a betting show betting show. So this is, I won't be telling you your units and all of this stuff. But it, we'll have a bit of fun with it. Throw a fiver on. See if we can turn it into a 15 maybe <laughs> towards the end of the week. Or maybe into zero. More than likely as we go here. So uh, my first bet I'm going to go for here is in the Caitlin Chukagan versus Jennifer Maya fight. Um, and I'm going to go for uh, Caitlin Chukagan to win this fight straight up. Um... And you can get her at around minus 180 to win this fight straight up. Now, w one of the bets that I always look for, I see a Ch Caitlin Chukagan fight, and I look for Caitlin Chukagan to win by decision. But if you look at the price for Caitlin Chukagan to win by decision, it's minus 130. I see some places here, minus 110. If you get at minus 110, you're probably better off taking it. But I think most places are around minus 130 and all. When there's that, when minus 130 to minus 180 just to win the fight, I think you're better off going for maybe the minus 180 there and, uh, you know, taking away a little bit of the risk. We don't want to get too greedy here with the with the, with the best to start off the year. I just think Chukagan, right? The very best in the division, obviously, you know, Shashinko uh, and maybe a couple more on the way up will will beat Chukagan. I think Jennifer Maya is one of the best in the division, but at more, you know, let, let's say Valentina Shashinko is 100 and Caitlin Chukagan is 70. It, <laughs> like, is is Maya closer to, to 60 or to 100? I would probably say 60. She, I think she's closer to that, like, top level that is actually the second level because there was one way, way above, if you know what I mean. Now, I might be explaining that badly, but she probably is the third, fourth, maybe second even, if we, we'll, we'll see on Saturday night, best flyweight in the world uh, at the moment. We would see other people coming up. Um, but number one is way, way ahead. The exact same thing could be said for Chugagan. Now, I think, and I'm going to very roundabout way of saying what I'm trying to say here. I think it'll be a close, even fight. And whenever Chukagan is in close, even fights, she usually wins them. You know, and maybe back in the day, it was a little bit different. She's had a lot of decisions, obviously, and things, and, and close ones as well. But I think her style, where a power game from her or her opponent is very rarely seen, is a very good style because she lands lots of shots. And, you know, we can talk about judging and it's all about impact. But when there is no massive impact, the amount of shots you land will win you the fight because their impact is more than the impact of anything else, if you get me. So I think Caitlin Chukagan's style in that division is a very, very good style and a very winnable style. It's like I, I've spoken about John Jones and I think his style now at the heavier divisions actually wouldn't be as good a style as it was a few years ago because of the judging. And he hasn't fought too many times <coughs> since 2017 since the judging has been changed. And the, the couple of fights that he has fought in... Um, uh, they were closer, you know, and they were very, very close decisions. And he was kind of given a house out of close decision, you know, five years ago. I would have won that 50 45. And, you know, he's probably right in some cases. But uh, I digress. Caitlin Chukagan, I think she can win a decision here. I think Maya will be looking like Maya, we know what Maya does. She's, she's well rounded and she'll try to get to the fight to the ground and get a submission and things like that. Chukagan, 
and we, we, there'll be a bit of this now, in, especially in the next fight I have as well. But I think Chukagan is good enough defensively there, uh, and good enough defensively on the feet against you know someone who doesn't bring the same sort of weapons that someone like a Valentina Shinko does to ward off the attacks of Maya and then land enough of her own just to probably take the decision. Maybe, you know, maybe finish, but very unlikely, I would say. I'd say probably a decision. If you like the decision, minus 130, but I'm going to Kagan straight up, minus 180, just to, just to win this fight straight up. Uh, the next fight I'm going for, I'm actually going for a decision in this one, and it's the Brandon Royval versus uh, Rodrigo Bantorin fight, and that's plus 170 for this to go to the decision. Either guy winning. Now, that might seem like that might seem like an odd bet considering you know okay it's the it's the lower weight classes as well but if you look at their records and I've gone back and look at their records there's lots of submission wins on it now lots of submission wins not many KO wins not many um uh decision wins and there's a few there's I think there's four decision wins I'm not sure about the KOs but mostly submissions and <clears throat> the reason I'm going for a decision here is because both guys have lots of submissions if uh, and haven't watched your games as well, like you, both of them are very good in the ground. Both of them are good everywhere. We we, we look, we know that Bonterin, his last few fights, uh, down last few years have been very good. Rival is one of these guys coming through from his part of the world as well. That everyone knows he's going to be technically good coming out of that camp, and you know, two two very good fighters, and it's an even matchup. So there's there's two uh, two reasons why I think this is going to decision. Firstly, is is the, the jiu-jitsu game if you know if they're known for their finishes the, lots of their finishes are come by submission and both of the guys go the same and this could be the same for anyone i could look at fighter a versus fighter b here and just look at those stats and then have uh, watch a bit of their fights and i'm thinking like well yeah both of them are really really good when you're usually really good offensively you're usually really good defensively as well and we know that um so will they kind of mark each other out will it be one of those things where it goes to the ground i think it will go to the ground for a while now it could be a stand-up matchup and and who do you fancy in that one it's probably close enough as well i might just give it to rival in, in the stand-up matchup uh but then again I, is he going to be knocking him flat out or anything like that i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong i think it, it, rival will be a little bit more it will be a little bit ahead of him there on the ground i think it'll be more even um but I think it will even itself out. And the, the second part of it is, when you get to this higher level, of both of these guys, you know, have fought good guys along the way, but this is kind of, you know, this could could decide the next challenger, or maybe the challenger after that. This is a high-level fight. When you get the high-level fights like this, they're often and always almost closer. They're very, very close fights. Um, and when it's a lower weight class as well, going to a decision... I like that. Plus 170. You know, a bunter, if you fancy him straight up, is plus 145, minus 170 for Rival. You know, I think that's just about right, maybe. I think that's just about right, but I'm going for the decision. Plus uh, plus 170 for that one. Uh, right, next one here. Um, I'm going to jump over to, to KSW quickly, uh, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I'm going for uh, Mikel Matarla minus 150 to win here. Now, Matarla's been away for a little while. He went and fought in, uh, another promotion. Um, he's fighting Jason Radcliffe here, who, you know, I, I did a bit of a preview on. I watched a couple of his fights. I know my, my guy Sean Dini has watched some of his fights as well. And he's predominantly like a kickboxer. He's, he's a good fighter. He came in and he got that, that big win in the 2 KSWs ago, I believe it was. Uh, and he came in as a bit of an underdog, but I just think Matarla is a little bit smarter. Like, Matarla's a very, very good fighter. He hits hard, he's good on the ground, good technical striker, he's in his hometown as well, and I'm sure that'll help. Um, and I was ex honestly, I, I was expecting this fight to be a lot further apart than it is. I thought uh, Matarla might be minus 300 even in this one, but no, it's a lot closer. Um, and when you look at, you know, Minus 150 for someone as good as that against someone like Radcliffe, who he's a good fighter. But from what I watch, maybe I haven't watched enough. I've watched, I watched what I could. I found a couple of his fights on YouTube. Um, what I've watched on him, I think he's limited enough when he's fighting someone as good as Matarla, if that makes sense. Now, if he can get it to where he wants it and he can land some of his big shots, absolutely, he can win the fight. I'm not saying that at all. He's not He's not scrub or anything like that. But I just do think Matarla might be a little bit better. But there's also in this one, like, what 
part of Matarla's career is he actually at is he a little bit over the hill like is he getting and now I, I don't think he's the oldest man in the world but he's, he's a lot of fights and a lot of wear and tear and a lot of tough fights and I'm sure a lot of tough training as well so I take all of that into account but yeah now I'm going for Matarla uh, straight up minus 155 uh, to win this one I was even thinking with some of these bets you know if, if uh, an ACA might be the, the right job for, for some of these we'll look at through all of the cards <coughs> it's not the best uh, apologies for the cough again I'm getting over a bit of a clue I don't think it's a uh, flu sorry I don't think it's the Rona I, th- I think I'm alright I had a few tests and stuff I did I didn't have it either, but yeah I'm, I'm just getting over it so apologies for the cough but yeah Matarla I'm going for Matarla to, to win that one um we will pop back to the rest of KSW at the end. I will give you my five bets first. So that's that's three of them so far. And the next one I'm going for um, is the main event of the UFC. And it's actually, funnily enough, not up in best fight odds, but I went uh, I went to one of the Irish bookmakers and, and found it there. Um, and I'm going for Jiga Chikadze to win this one. Uh, plus 100 to win inside the distance. Now, he's a big favourite in this. Uh, and I think he's justified to be a big favourite. Calvin Cater is a very, very good fighter. Um, and a tough, tough fighter as well. And lots of people are probably, you know, if you're watching this, you're probably saying, oh, to win inside the distance, isn't Cater the guy with the unbelievable chin who took all those shots from Max Holloway? And that's a bit of my reason why I'm going for this inside the distance. You don't ride free in this game. You don't take all of those shots without it having a big, big effect on you. Especially for someone like Cater, you're like... Cater has a lot of fights. He's like fifty fights or something, doesn't he? Loads of fights. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure my good guy uh, John Branigan will put up his record here. Up oh, there. Oh, there it is. Uh, um, <laughs> and you can see how many fights he has. But he's lots of wear and tear. He's been around for a long time. And look, that toughens you. That makes you take tough without a shadow of a doubt. But there comes a point as well when you're fighting at the top level and you fight someone like Max Holloway over five rounds and he gives you one of the biggest beatings in the history of the UFC. Um, and look, that's. That's a good thing, I suppose, and a bad thing in a certain way. It shows how good you are, it shows how tough you are. But it also is 25 minutes of head smashing by one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. And then you're coming in here now, not... Well, it's a, it's a good bit later, but still, it's not not 10 years later, you know, against the, the most dangerous guy in the, uh, in the featherweight rankings up and coming. I, I think a lot of people would agree with that now. Some might say, you know, Zebit, or some might say Yair, or, you know, so Aaron Lallan or others, but he hits so hard. He is so tough, so well-rounded. Um, I just think Chikadze will have too much for Cater, and it'll be one of those ones as well where, look, Chan Sung Jung is getting the title fight now, and who's going to get the next title fight? Is it going to be Max Holloway? Is it going to be Jiga Chikadze? Now, it'll probably be Max Holloway because they're mad to give Max Holloway it, but... Imagine if Chikadze goes out here and knocks out Cater in the first round or in the second or third round or something. That would be a big, big statement. He'd be coming out saying afterwards, I'm sure Max Holloway couldn't do that. I did that. I'm the next guy in line. I should be for Chan Sung Jung even gave me my title shot. And he'd probably be right to say that too. You know, this division needs new blood. I won't go through it again. I went through it in the other video, but... Division needs new blood, and he will be that new blood if he wins this fight. Now, that brings an added bit of pressure as well, don't get me wrong. But he is um, hes a very, very good fighter. And he look, when I say it brings added pressure, I think he's the type of guy that will thrive on that, that will love it, and will, will rise to the occasion and realize this is what I have to do. If I win this fight in this fashion, it will take me to this level. And I think he'll do that. And I just, look... Straight up, I just think he hits so hard. Uh, that that jigger kick to the body is just unbelievable as well. Um, and I could see it. I could see a liver kick KO or something like that here. But I think he just hits too hard. He's, his conditioning seems to be really, really good as well. Um, and if he can keep up that pace and keep landing big hard shots for two or three rounds, I think it's going to be very hard for Cater to uh, to withhold that. And as well, when you look at someone like Cater, who's a good technical boxer, like, and I'm, I'm sure it won't be easy for Chikadze, because especially, okay, if it goes and Chikadze wins the first two rounds, I think maybe he'll, you know, it'll maybe get a little bit easier in for him. I mean, not, not easier, but I, I think he will be happy, he will be in a, a good rhythm. But what if he loses the first round or loses the second round? Then there starts to be questions asked of him uh, and of the fight itself. So... Uh, it, it's an interesting one. Like it's a very, very interesting fight. But I do believe in Jiga Chikadze. I do believe in his strengths as a fighter, uh, and I believe he'll get it done here inside the distance. Uh, so yeah, that's my bet for the main event of the OC. 
Right, my flyer of the week. My fl- my flyer of the week here is. I think it'll happen. I I, <laughs> I think it'll happen. So my flyer of the week here is. <clears throat> <coughs> as I cough, as I, as I die, sorry. Uh, by next week, I should be fine. Chase Sherman, first round KO against Jake Collier, plus 500. 5 to 1. Now, that, a heavyweight to win by first round KO. I like that. Now, he's the underdog here, which is a little bit surprising. I actually had him as one of my bets. Uh, and then I went looking for a flyer. and was like, oh, well, I'm going to have to adjust one of them. But um, I, I think just him straight up, at, I, he's plus 110 here in some places, plus 115. I even see him here. Uh, in one place, I think that's a great price to be honest. Uh, look, I, I I like Collier; he's a good fighter, but I think Sherman is a more and a, a more honest heavyweight, if you want to put it that way. You know, Collier has kind of come up in weights. Sherman, when he came into the UFC, you know, I remember he had all that that meme game and everything, and he was all over Twitter. He's kind of left that behind him now, and he's just a good, honest pro, I think. And I've 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 a bit of respect for uh, for Chase Sherman, to be honest. Um and. I, I think if he can come out here, land a big shot, he very much can finish Jay Collier. Can he do it in the first round? I think he I think he can. Now, look, it's, a, it's an even enough fight as well. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Collier win. But if you were to ask me who I think is win, will win, Sherman, how I think he'll win, I think he'll probably win it by a first or an early KO. First round, plus 500, heavyweights. Why not? Let's do it. Let's have some fun. That's your flyer of the week. Nice one. Turn turn five quid into 30 quid. It'd be a lot, nice, nice way of doing it. Nice way of starting the year, though, wouldn't it? So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I like that. I think it's a good one. I, 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 do, I do think this is one of those one, these one these fights that will stay on the feet. Sherman, I think he's become better defensively um, over the years. And I think... That just, I think he's big and long and hits hard. I think if he can land that jab and the straight right down through the middle, I think that could be the doing of Jay Collier. Now, maybe that won't happen, but that's my flyer of the week, and I, I like that one. I like it. Uh, right, let me run through some of the other bets uh, on the card here. There's an Invicta card as well here, and the one I was looking at on that, um, I believe that's coming up this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Katie Saul here is fighting uh, over in Ireland. She's minus 105. She's the favourite there. Oh, well, you know, that's that's uh, not about... Actually, the fight is after getting changed, I think. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the, the other one here now. I'm, I'm not... Yeah, I, I think... She, is she fighting Tamika Jones now? She's a minus one... Or she's a minus 350 favourite here now. Sorry, actually. So that fight looks like it's after getting changed. So, uh, yeah, I, I probably avoided now and that. That's a, that's a, that's a big price. But, uh, yeah, there's Courtney K... Um, uh, Zappaletta's fighting in that one in the main event as well, I believe, against uh, Jessica Del Boni. Uh She's minus uh, 250, is Del Boni. Zappaletta is plus 155. So, yeah, check out them as well. But the UFC, um, we'll run through some of these. As a, the, the bets I already gave Maya is uh, plus 155, Chukagan is plus uh, 170, 180 there just to win straight up. Uh, Rival and Bontarin, as I mentioned, very close again, minus 170 for Rival, plus. 145 for Bontarin, Che Sherman as well, plus 110 ish, Jay Collier minus 130, 135. Another bit I was looking at, Bill Algio. I oh, like a bit of Bill, you know. <laughs> He's fighting uh, Joe Danderson Brito. Uh, Algio is plus 115, uh, Brito is minus 135. Uh, Jay, lots of close fights in this one. The Court McGee fight as well against uh, Razim. Uh, is uh, minus 110, minus 110. The, the Jimmy Pickett Holmes fight. Uh, Pickett is a slight underdog there, plus 125, minus 145 for Holmes. So lots of close fights uh, on this one. Uh, Gabriel Benitez, I'm a big fan of his. I like him, minus 170. I was thinking of going for that one as well against TJ Brown. Um, for uh, what's his, I'll just let me see the the, the price to win by uh, by a submission here for uh, for Benitez plus what plus 600. That was another one I was looking at earlier for my um for my flyer bet, but uh yeah I, I like that one as well. Brian Kelleher is a big underdog. Well, not a big underdog here, slide underdog here. Dakota Bush is on the card. He's an underdog uh, as well. So yeah, look the UFC. It's not a look. It's not a great card. We all know that. Getting us back into it. There's a fantastic card coming the week after. So we we'll, we we'll look forward uh, to that without a shadow of a doubt. Then KSW. This is this is the card of the weekend. I think this is a fantastic card. Um. The betting that I'm most intrigued by in this one is the Donovan Desme against Lucas uh, Rajewski fight. Desme is the, the former Cage Warriors title contender. He came in his first fight in KSW and lost. Uh, and he's a plus 150 underdog here against uh, Lucas. That's a very, very close fight. Like, if you believe that first one was a bit of an anomaly for Desme, and he, he had a tough fight as well, but I think that might be a bad, bad price. But Rajewski, his brother's on the card as well. He's fighting Nicholas Backstrom. 
Um, Sebastian Rajewski, he's a minus 180 favourite uh, as well, both of them are. I would definitely be going for uh, Rajewski to beat Backstrom. Backstrom has been out for three years. But he's a good fighter, don't get me wrong, uh, as well. But yeah, maybe maybe go for the Rajeski double there. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be the one that'll probably get you, maybe, what, plus 200 or something like that. That might be a bad one there. As I mentioned as well, Matarla, minus 155. Uh, but the two title fights then, uh, Narcoon. He's not a big a favourite, maybe, as I thought he would be. I see one place here is in minus 400. That might be about right. Another place is in plus 275. Uh, and his opponent's around plus 300. Uh, did I say plus 275? Minus, minus 400-ish. Minus 300, minus 400 for an Arcoon. I think that's about right. I think he'll uh, I think he'll win it. Uh, and then Boris Mankowski against Martin Zalowski. Um... Close enough fight again, minus 175 there for Marcin, plus 140 for uh, Mankowski. I think that is just about right. Like, I did a bit of a preview for that, so I won't go through it too much. But um, there are three big, big fights in that one with Matarla up and in the two Rajowski brothers as well. That one against Donovan Desmond, I think that could be the fight of the weekend, honestly. I really, really like that fight. Uh, so, yeah, if you fancy that one, um, I, I don't know. Honestly, that's one of the ones I don't know. That's of a kind. That's of a kind. I, I I probably got just lean for Desmond. I go for Desmond and then I go for Sebastian Rakowski as well to win. So I give one brother to win and one one brother to last, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Right. Uh, let me run through my five bets again for the weekend. I'm going for Caitlin Chukagan straight up plus uh minus one eighty, even Caitlin Chukagan minus one eighty. Uh, I'm going for the Bontarin versus Rigal fight to go to a decision, plus 170. I'm going for Mikel Materla uh, over in KSW at minus 150. I'm going for Jigic Kadze to win the main event uh, inside the distance at plus 100. And via Flyer of the Week, I'm going for Chase Sherman, round one KO at plus 500. Right, my name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and this is The Betting Show. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time.